Hello folks. This video is produced by Alaska's DEC's Division of Water Operator Training and Certification Program in order to help water and wastewater system operators score higher in the math sections of the exams. The video is designed to give operators another tool to use when solving water system math problems. So first we're going to look at the exam formula sheets. We administer exams for water treatment, water distribution, wastewater treatment, wastewater collections, small treated and small untreated exams. These three sheets specifically are for water treatment and distribution, but they all have a very similar look. We have a page typically with some formulas on them. We have some abbreviations, some conversion factors. Uh, some of them have an alkalinity relationship. And then the last page typically is going to have Davidson pie wheels. Now the Davidson pie wheels is really what we're going to focus on. They haven't been used a lot in the past, but we found that the math part of these exams is giving people trouble, so we want to introduce another tool for folks to use. If they want to go to a, a website that allows them to get sheets for other types of exams that we administer, they can go up to where this flashing blue arrow is at the top and look at this website, and that's where you can download these other sheets. We do highly encourage folks to download these sheets, get to know them, get confident with them, and then when you go into the examiner, handed the same exam sheets that you had been working with with in the past, we find that you're probably going to get a higher test score because you're going to be confident with something you've already been uh, around and, and knowledgeable of. So we're going to move on with the Davidson Pie wheels. It may or may not be helpful. If you're very comfortable with formulas and you're all good with it, well then you might as well stick with the formulas. But if you're not and you've been having trouble with remembering formulas or figuring how to use formulas, flipping things from back one side to the other as your algebra requires, then you might want to look at uh, Davidson pie wheel. So this is what is the area of a rectangle. So we've got a rectangle that's two inches by eight inches. What we want to do is draw a circle, cut it in half, and then draw a line from the center of the horizontal line to the bottom of the circle. So now we have a Davidson pie wheel and we have three different sections of the Davidson pie wheel. We want to fill in with the variables and the information that we have. So we've got eight inches as the length, two inches as the width, and so the area of the rectangle is going to be 16 inches squared. And Here we have our inches squared. So what you want to look at as far as exponents go and where do they get this two for the units, there's a little one here that we never write and a little one here that we really never write above the inches. So eight inches to the first, two inches to the first. When we multiply these two terms together, we add the exponents to get 16 inches squared. So another way to look at the, uh, this system is an area of a rectangle over length times width. So if we want to look at our Davidson pie wheel similar to a fraction, we've got a division line here which is what the fraction line is and we've got the area of a rectangle so that would be divided by length times width. The uh, Davidson pie wheel too. Our area of a rectangle is on one side of the equal sign, we put it in the top, the other side of the equal sign, the length times the width or whatever variables are over here, go in the bottom slices of the pie and that helps folks remember how to make it work. So we're going to do another rectangle scenario. We've got a five inch length on this rectangle. We don't know the width and so what we're going to do is draw in the grid pattern so you could count them up and know exactly what that number needs to be but if we stuck it into a Davidson pie wheel we'd have the area of the rectangle on the top, we'd have the length on on the bottom as well as the width. We could put our thumb over the width and cover that up and then we just know that oh since this is a division line we can divide 15 by 5 to get that answer. So 15 divided by 5 is 3 inches so hopefully everybody got that. This next example is going to be what is the area of a circle that has a 20 feet diameter. Uh, again, we're going to look at the Davidson pie wheel. Uh, we might have to bump over to look at our formula worksheets to get the formula if that's the direction you want to go, but what we're going to work with specifically in this uh, video presentation is the Davidson pie wheel. And so from the area of the circle, we're going to stick that. It's on one side of the equal sign on the top. We're going to stick the constant and the diameter squared on the bottom. So 20 squared is 400 feet squared times 0.785 is going to give us 314.0 foot squared. So that tip to cover up the pie slice you're trying to solve with your thumb and either divide or multiply accordingly. In this situation we, we covered up this area of a circle space because we wanted to multiply these two together. In the previous slide we covered up this space and we divided the area of the rectangle by the given. So the first example one is surface of area of a lagoon. If you're pacing off a rectangle lagoon, in order to get the size of the lagoon, you walked the length of the lagoon and found that it was 60 feet long. If the area is 1,620 feet, what is the width of the lagoon? Well, if we draw our Davidson pie wheel out and we stick in our variables, then we can stick in the known information and that way you would divide the 
er the area by the length. If we were going to work with it in the formula scenario, we'd have to divide, divide this side by length, divide this side by length, and then we'd end up with a formula that looked like this. We divide the 1625 by the 60, we'll get 27 no matter what we do, whether we use the formula or the Davidson pie wheel. Example two, we have a water tank that's 20 feet high and has a diameter of 25 feet, what is the volume of the tank in gallons? Well, what I would do in this scenario is typically jump back over to my formula sheets, find the volume of the cylinder, which is right here, volume of a cylinder, and the volume of a cylinder in the formula sections, and that way I'd write them down or just utilize them, go back to my question, and start to figure it out from there. Oh, the tank volume is what we want to know, it needs to be in gallons, the height of the tank is 20 feet, the diameter is 25 feet, so I'm going to throw my Davidson pie wheel up there, section out the bottom half for three different areas of variables. We've got a constant, diameter squared, and height. Fill in those numbers because we have them. I know that I've got to multiply them all together, so that's what I do to get the answer. If I wanted to do the formula, this is the formula that I would have to work with. In this situation, I just multiply these three together to get the volume. You get 9,812.5 feet cubed, either way you do it. The challenge here is they ask for gallons rather than feet cubed, so we have to do a little conversion. Again, you can find that on your formula sheets. You go to the conversion, set up a ratio, and you can cross multiply with that ratio because 7.48 gallons equals one foot cubed. We don't know the number of gallons that equals 9,812.5 feet cubed, so if we cross multiply, we should get our gallons of 73,402.6 gallons. And that's the final answer for the cylinder X question. We've got one last example. It's me the pounds formula. And this is what typically we're using the Davidson pie wheel for. You'll see this a lot more than other questions as far as when you see the Davidson pie wheel. So I'm going to write down all three of the things that we know. A uh, plant requires 1,042.5 pounds per day of chemical and the flow is 4 million gallons per day. What is the dosage in milligrams per liter? So I've got all those things written down. I pop over to my formula worksheet and find the formula. There it is. Now in this situation, if you were doing algebra, you'd have to take these numbers and divide both sides by them. So you divide 1,042.5 by this set of numbers and variables. In the Davidson pie wheel, we'd fill in the same kind of thing, only up here we'd have 1,042.5, and two of the pie slices would have these numbers in them. This last one, you could put your thumb over it for the dosage, and then with this system, you just know, oh, we just multiply these two numbers together, we divide 1,042.5 by these numbers, and we'd get the answer. You're going to have to cancel out the different variables, and then you're going to get the answer. Whether you do it with the formula or the Davidson pie wheel, you're still going to get the same answer. We just have found that the visual representation by the Davidson pie wheel is much easier. So that's the Operator Training and Certification Program video presentation for Davidson pie wheels. I'm going to do some more stuff in the future. Will you be using the Davidson pie wheel again? If you have other questions, you can shoot them off to our email you could also look at our website and we have a Facebook website that you're welcome to check out. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. Hopefully it was helpful and I'll uh, look forward to hearing from you.